Hello, Pat Harris here. Uh, welcome to part one of the Final Cut Pro basic tutorials. Uh, in this section, we will be covering the interface, how to import files, organization, and sequence settings. All right, let's get started. You open up Final Cut Pro, this is what you get. It can seem kind of confusing. Basically, you have different sections of the interface that can be moved around how you like them. Um, all right, let's start uh, explaining what these are. Right over here, you have the browser. This is pretty much where all the clips and everything you have in your timeline or in your video uh, are going to be held. And you can also browse through effects up here. These different tabs bring you to different spots. Right here, we have the viewer, which basically, if you have a clip and you double click on it, It'll show up in the viewer, you can look at the filters on it, you can look at the audio from it, and you can do some you know, scaling, rotation. Right here we have the canvas. This is basically what you're playing in your timeline. And then of course your timeline, which is where you assemble your project. You know, you put all your clips here, all your edits go in here. And then over here we have our audio meters over here, and then we have our different tools that you can use. Well, that's the basics of the uh, interface, so let's uh, import some clips and show you around. Importing is very easy if you have all the files on your computer already. But before we do that, I'm just going to show you the login transfer and login capture windows. Login transfer is what you'll be using if you're using digital media such as the HVX or the HPX, or even if you use a DSLR, they all shoot on either SD cards, XD cards, or P2 cards. It moves the files much more quickly than if you were to use Log and Capture. Basically, if I had a camera connected here, it would show all the clips, and you can either skim through, set in and out points, and you can actually just do the parts you want, or you can just select them all and import them. And the settings should be ProRes already, and that can get confusing if you're new and still learning it, but you shouldn't have to worry about it. Okay. And now the login capture window. This is what you'd be using if you're using some sort of tape media. Maybe uh, you were shooting in the studio, you have a studio show, that'll all be on tape. And that'll come up and you'll have to capture the whole tape. It takes a lot longer, it's real time. Whereas if you use the transfer, it's actually just moving data files. So if you have the files already on your computer, all you have to do is file import, and then you can locate the files. And I have a few clips here that I'm just gonna just upload these ones here. These were uh, clips I shot with my 60D. All right, now, here's all your clips on the left here in the browser. And if you click on the video tab in Viewer, you'll be able to look at the clips. If you double click them, double click a clip anywhere, it shows, it, it brings it up in the viewer. And now one thing you have to notice is the size. We want to do fit to window. So now this is the whole size of the video. And there it just kind of moves, goes around, whatever. I was adjusting something. All right, and there's your clip. It's very important to be organized while you're editing. One of the best organization features in Final Cut Pro is to create bins within your project. To do this, you go over into the, into the browser, have your project tab selected, and you can either right click and then click new bin, or the shortcut key is Apple B or Command B. I usually like to create a few different bins depending on the project. And, you know, I'll do uh, maybe source footage, um, maybe clips used, maybe audio, I'll make an, one more, I'll do maybe graphics. No, this one didn't save, okay. Clips used. Okay, so then what you can do is you can just, oh, you can just take all of your source footage, throw it in there. Okay, now, this is the basic organization. Now you can do this, if you have a long thing with scenes, you could do this within each scene and you know, uh, organize your footage within each scene. Or you, know, you can make it as complex as you want. But one thing that you need to understand when you're editing with Final Cut is that these files are not located in the Final Cut Pro file. These are still located somewhere on the computer. So if you imported these off a hard drive, and you close Final Cut, disconnect the hard drive, and then load up Final Cut again, you're, the files won't be there. You need to make sure you know where all of these files are. 
And now there's a nice feature that if you don't know where a file is, you can do reveal, right click it and reveal on Finder. And this is showing me that it's on my hard drive called Ace and it's right here. This is especially important if you're using Archan computers to capture footage. If you're using the Archan computers to either do the uh, login, login transfer or login capture, you need to make sure that you first save the project as a certain name. This is because when you uh, capture footage, it has to put it somewhere and it defaults to the hard drive and it defaults to under documents, uh, it's right under Final Cut Pro documents and capture scratch, but within that folder, it organizes it based on the title of the project. So if you don't name the title of the project, you know, and if two or three people, other people do the same thing, we'll have four untitled projects and we won't know what any of that footage is and it can't stay there very long. The Mac hard drives are not very big and you need to move your footage as soon as you capture it. Just move it right to your hard drive and then you can re-import it into Final Cut in a new project or just reconnect it in the same project. But basically you cannot leave it on the hard drive because it will get deleted, especially if you don't label it because we can't tell what is what. Okay, so that's, that's the basic of importing clips and the basics throughout the uh, interface. And now we'll just do one more thing, which is sequence settings. Now, if you go up, when, when the way it works is each kind of timeline can be a new sequence. So if you look down on the timeline window, we see sequence one here. This is also in our project. If we right click, we can create a new sequence. And then if we double click this, now we'll have two different timelines here and they can be nested inside of each other. The problem is, is that these sequence settings might not always be the same. If you click on a sequence and go to sequence, sequence settings, you get all this, this fun stuff that might be confusing or you might understand it. It doesn't matter. Basically, if you're shooting HD, you should, you know, it should be HDTV. That's pretty self-explanatory. Or if you're shooting, you know, standard or you do NTSC, and I believe the studios are now widescreen, so you'd want to do anamorphic 16 by 9. But regardless, what you would want to do is if you're, if you're not sure of how to set the sequence settings or anything, you can just drag a clip. If you drag your first clip in and it doesn't match, see th these, and, and it doesn't say anything, that means your sequence settings are matched. Whereas, let's go into sequence one, let's just uh, change something up here. We'll do, we'll just make it sta uh, st standard definition. We'll hit OK. That changes your sequence window up here. And now if we bring in HD footage and drag it into the clip, it'll ask me. For best performance, uh, your sequence and external video should be set to the, you know, so you click yes, and then it'll automatically base your um, sequence on the clips you imported. Okay, well, that's it for uh, part one of the Final Cut Pro 7 uh, training series. Make sure you check out part two of the Final Cut Pro tutorials, where we will cover basic cutting, sequences, speed changes, and freeze frames. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out RTN at rtnch5.tv where you can watch live programming and make sure you check out my site, cinematicdslr.com.